Hello. Welcome to another sketchbook dive. So, question is, you might have a sketchbook in front of you, a piece of paper, digital canvas, whatever it might be. Wow, my voice sounds and feels weird early in the morning. You know how it is. Anyway, if you're a human, you probably go into things with questions and concerns. I certainly do. You know, when it comes to sketching or your sketchbook, there could be questions like, well, <laughs> what subject matter do I draw? How detailed should I go? How much space should I take up on the page? Is it meant to be artwork to be offered as prints? Should it be super organized on the page? And, and you know, just an entire range of questions like that. And I suppose the short answer is, well, it can be any of those things or none of those things. It really doesn't matter. It's your sketchbook. Let's take a quick look at the definition of sketchbook. It's a pad or book of drawing paper for sketching on. Okay, well, that doesn't give us much. What about sketching? What does sketching mean? Well, it means to make a rough drawing or give a brief account or general outline of something or to perform a gesture with one's hand or body. Well, I guess that kind of um, is kind of like drawing. So, well, all right, well, what about drawing? What does that mean? And, well, a drawing is a picture or diagram made with a pencil, pen, or crayon, or something. Uh, but the act of drawing is the art or activity of making those diagrams or drawings. And we can get into like a bunch of different definitions like drafting, illustrating, designing, painting. There are a lot of ways to define the things that we do, all these different things. So then what do you do for a sketchbook? And as I said, it doesn't really matter. But let's address each concern, each of those questions that I posed earlier. And the first one being, well... What subject matter do I choose? Which goes along with the question of how detailed should I go? There's no really specific right answer to say you should always draw this or that. Um, now, if you're trying to study something specific like perspective, then yeah, sure. But uh, we could probably lay out a range, a kind of spectrum of things you could draw. You know, all the way from uncontrolled abstraction to fully detailed renderings. It's your sketchbook after all. If you imagine it like a graph, the thing you could draw could be starting from an absolute nonsensical randomness and lines, circles, marks, shadings. You know, e even if there's people out there who think there's no point to this or there's no value into the randomness, which they're totally wrong, uh, it's still your own art. It's your own expression, your own sketchbook, and you have every right to do that if you so choose. So, uh, yeah, you could just kind of make random things and fill up a whole sketchbook with randomness. Maybe it's a good therapeutic experience for you to do that, so that's completely fine. Um, so next on the spectrum could be the idea of automatic drawing. So this is still a bit abstract, but with a bit more motor controls involved. What that means is, like, you're starting by making a mark or a shape or a line uh, or anything on a piece of paper and letting it organically evolve into things with a bit of control, like, you know, you might move it in a certain direction and repeat that shape over and over. It's not as random and um, explosive as the first example, but you're doing this without trying to force it to be something specific. This exercise is really good practice to learn to sort of let go uh, of needing to control absolutely everything. This is really good if you're a perfectionist. You'll start to learn to embrace the random uh, or at least uh, relinquishing that full need to control everything. So uh, next on the spectrum, stepping away from abstraction could be drawing ideas. Now, this could be sort of like a visual note-taking situation. We are not trying to illustrate a well-designed piece of art, but rather your intent in this sketchbook is to get an idea on paper. For me, for example, if I get a list of characters that need to be designed, and the list has a bunch of attributes for each character, whether it's D&D &D or um, characters for a movie or something, um, what I would do first is draw very crude stick figures for each character that needs to be designed. And once I have the stick figures, uh, they're, they're really poorly drawn, I start dressing them up with the attributes, with writings and clarifications. For example, 
If person A is supposed to have a huge sword on her back, steampunk goggles, or ruby red earring and leather boots, I'll draw those things almost the way a child would on a stick figure. That helps me sort of see what needs to be drawn overall, and it helps me kind of zoom out and also see what's missing. So as a designer, I can fill in the gaps because in that description, it didn't really tell me what she was wearing uh, or you know the pose that they're taking. So that would be up to me as the artist or designer. I might loosely draw a skirt, pants, whatever. But basically, it's going back to the idea of drawing ideas in your sketchbook. You could, you could fill up an entire sketchbook filled with stick figures, but each one has different ideas that can be taken as a starting point for a full design later on. And this doesn't have to just stick with, well, stick figures, but even landscapes, uh, weapon design, uh, you know, portraiture, illustrations, doesn't matter. They're just like maps, reference points, or jotting down fleeting ideas before they're entirely gone. This could also be for comic book panels, very loose stick figure representations of your story. Uh, it doesn't even have to be stick figures. It could just be like scribbles with like a smiley face on them. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, just something to start with and kind of play with, allowing it to evolve as you go rather than forcing it to be a perfect thing right away. So next on the spectrum, and all of this isn't really intended to be in any particular order or hierarchy of importance, you kind of have the choice of, of figuring that out for yourself. Uh, so anyway, you, you could choose to draw whatever is in front of you. Now, this is kind of uh, a thing that is necessary practice for artists who want to be able to to, de to depict scenes of people, things, uh, architecture, vehicles, whatever. It's kind of like world building uh, and more, right? But there also doesn't really need to be a reason at all. You could just do it for the fun of it or the genuine curiosity of, of drawing what's in front of you. Um, if you have like a, a potted plant in front of you and you don't, you just have it there and you just start drawing, you might discover certain shapes or flows or rhythm. That's kind of the joy of, of diving into it without trying to make it into something spectacular. And the thing about your sketchbook or your art in general is that it's yours. You don't have to justify absolutely everything you do in front of a panel of tyrant judges waiting to invalidate you and your work, which does bring up another subject regarding applying for jobs, uh, but that's a different situation um, because in that case, you, what you bring to the table does need to be at a certain standard, but that's not what this video is about. That's, that could be covered in a different topic, different video. Uh, we're talking about you, your cup of coffee, the morning sun, your cat there ignoring you, and you're sitting there with your sketchbook. So I did get a bit derailed there for a moment, but yes, you could draw what's in front of you. This could be literally anything, the table, the window, plants, the kitchen, anything in front of you. Uh, it could also be reference images, toys, anime, movie posters, anything. It's your right to interpret the world uh, that you see in front of you. It's your sketchbook. Again, you don't need to justify it to anyone. And you know, I get it. There's, There might be an army of losers out there who want to control what you express. And if what you do doesn't align with their vision, they feel this need, a deep, deep need to tear you down and shame you and guilt trip you and gaslight you and say that you have to draw this. You're supposed to draw that. Why do you, draw, why do you waste your time drawing this? Blah, 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 blah. These people, they are not your friends. These people, you must learn to ignore. No matter how much you try to please them, they'll still hate you. That's just the nature of them, you know. They'll find every opportunity to demand that you must listen to them. It's like... <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so uh, life drawing is also great. If you have models either in real life or in images and video, it, it's always great to, you know, do that as a study or practice or just for fun. There will always be something new to learn from different models, poses, lighting, and that in itself can be fun. It is for me. So, moving on, uh, the next the next thing on the spectrum is drawing from imagination. And I do want to preface this that 
not everyone has the luxury of imagining something in their mind because they're dealing with what's called aphantasia. Now, this is defined as the inability to form mental images of objects that are not present. This doesn't mean that you, you know, if you have this, it doesn't mean that you, if you look up at the clouds, you might notice like shapes of turtles or teddy bears. And this could be another way of inventive drawing. It doesn't have to start in your mind, you know. So if you deal with aphantasia, uh, that doesn't make you less or more of an artist. You're just another artist just like the rest of us. You just kind of operate differently. So as long as you express yourself through action, be it on paper, pencil, paint, digital, dance, you're an artist. So uh, regarding drawing from imagination, this could be a mix of automatic drawing, abstract, and a bit of controlled intent. That's that's at least what I enjoy doing here and there. Uh, making some random scribbles and seeing a face in there and kind of going with it is really fun for me. And uh, the thing is, this this can be a tricky thing, especially if you're starting out. If you've spent, for example, four years studying and drawing the interior of cars and engines, then you'll probably be able to sketch one from imagination, or you could kind of make something up that looks like it. You could also make up completely new ideas based on your understanding of those things, the engines and stuff. However, if you suddenly needed to draw a face or a character, but have never studied faces, figures, anatomy, you know, all that stuff, then you'll probably experience severe frustration. So, in the case of drawing from imagination, your mental library of content must be updated, informed through repeated studying of content, shapes, lines, proportion, and much more. So, what you so that when you sketch freely without reference you can pull from this mental library now i liken this to to your ability to write sentences you know at a very early age you studied and practiced the letters and characters of whatever language you grew up in you grew up with in schools uh and i would imagine that if you right now had to write out a sentence on paper you probably will not need reference of your respective alphabet. Uh, you already put in the mileage and learned the lines and shapes, and if you so choose, you could probably develop your own handwriting style with flourishes and all that jazz. So think of your mental library like that. If you draw eyes enough, you'll eventually be able to do it without looking. And then you could start mixing different ideas and references to develop totally new things. That pretty much goes for everything. So, okay. That covers the that topic of drawing from imagination. And then the last thing on the spectrum uh, of what I'm kind of like figuring out for myself is that it could be making illustrations in your sketchbook. What I mean by this is the thing you're doing isn't really meant to be rough sketching, but although rough sketches could totally be illustrations, but rather the things that you're doing here in this category are intended for posters, prints, uh, Instagram posts, that kind of thing. Um, and the art that comes to mind are the sketches and artworks by Eliza Ivanova. I love her stuff. Uh, it really feels like each one of her sketches and drawings could be a full poster print. And there's a certain aesthetic or a kind of decorative quality in her work. And she even paints and colors a handful of them. And I think they're they're done on individual papers, so I don't know if they're necessarily sketchbook sketches, but that's what I mean by art intended to be illustrations. Now, this could include rendered drawings that are orchestrated to look a certain way, whether it's like a realistic sketch, uh, really kind of shaded to um, the full value range. Uh, it could be with as little or as much detail as you choose. You could choose to place, you know, detail absolutely everywhere, or you could be strategic and only detail out the focal points. Either is fine, it's up to you. So to answer the question, is the thing you do in your sketchbook meant to be artwork, to be offered as prints? Well, it certainly can be, but it doesn't have to be. This was something I personally was asking myself when I was drawing what you're seeing on the screen here. There was an inner voice trying to take the steering wheel and drive what I was doing. Uh, as though it were like frantically saying, wait, 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 stop, stop, 
You have to make this orchestrated to be a piece of artwork. It's got to be sold as prints. What are you doing? Stop. It has to be presentable for Instagram. Think of the spacing. What are you doing? What about NFTs? Which, by the way, uh, NFTs will be another video soon. That's quite, quite an interesting new frontier for us as artists. But, you know, for me, the tug of war was between... I want, I want to be okay with letting the page be whatever uncontrolled roughness without forcing it to be something versus must control it all and make it presentable. That's something I'm personally working on. But this does lead us to the next question. How much space should I take up on the page? And if you're seeing what I'm drawing on the screen, I'm not at all concerned with the composition of the page, the spacing, the readability of the sketches. I'm just going at it. Filling in random spaces, drawing faces here, full bodies there. Nothing is really following any kind of laid out format. I did feel a bit of anxiety thinking about um, that when I was drawing because I have seen some sketchbooks that look like professionally laid out art books. You know, they have rhythm, spacing, flow. It looks like a curated museum experience. And, you know, uh, Knight Zhang's sketchbook comes to mind. Absolutely beautiful sketchbook. And personally, I feel, you know, overstressed when I think about doing that. So I just dive in and make marks without trying to make it a layout. So if you if you want to take up all the space on your sketchbook page, go for it. Have fun, you know. Uh, if you want to, uh, however, orchestrate the viewing experience and lay it out like an art book, go for it. That's fine too. And, and by the way, if you do want to do that, kind of make it feel like it's a curated experience with like layout and, and spacing and, and rhythm and all that. I suggest grabbing your favorite art books, magazines and such, and do kind of little thumbnail layout studies of each page. Try to figure out where things are, what, where they're placed, how those things create flow, rhythm, shape design. Look at the empty spaces, excuse me, uh, between them and kind of like take note of that. My favorite books to, 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 to I can't speak right now uh, my favorite books to study for this are the art of Disney books some pages have full illustrations from uh, edge to edge and some pages have like little vignettes of sketches and moments and when you look at those and like kind of connect the dots and align them you'll see that they create this kind of gestural rhythm uh, the book for uh, Tangled kind of comes to mind I studied that a while back and then uh, you can take, you can then take inspiration from and let them spill out into whatever you do. So I guess within this category of uh, what do you draw in your sketchbook, you can kind of conclude with the the thought and idea that you can draw or sketch whatever you want in your sketchbook. You know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I wonder if writing out this stuff for a video and uh, talking about it is giving myself the answers that I need to hear for my own concerns and insecurities. Well, yeah, that's definitely it. But, you know, others may benefit from, from me sharing them. So, so here it is. Uh, and, you know, that's, wow, it's only 18 minutes in. Uh, I recorded like an hour, hour's worth of drawing. I think what I'll do is probably stop talking and just let the video play out if you want to watch it and hear the sketching noises um, so that you know it doesn't go to waste but you know regarding other things like um, like YouTube you know I know that I have been sort of a YouTube phantom appearing and disappearing and I, I've realized that it's only like a reflection of my own personal struggle struggles through life Sometimes I have things figured out, and other times I'm totally lost and confused, but, you know, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe next week I'll discover that my true purpose in life is to make clickbait videos. Hey guys, I do real concept art using crayons. Can I do it? You know. Uh, anyway. Cool. Uh, hope that was helpful. Hopefully that kind of uh, let you free up your, your own personal concerns about sketchbook or sketching or just making art in general. Because uh, I kind of wish I had somebody tell me these things when I was um, early on starting out with my own questions in mind. Anyway, yo, look. Hey, thanks for watching.
Have a good one. I'll see you later.